Hello, this is Mr. Stein, and in this video, we're going to look at example problems 3 and 4 from section 5.6, Properties of Linear Relations. By the time you're done this lesson, you should be able to determine if a relation is linear or not, based on either the table of values or the graph. The graph is much easier. You should be able to relate the slope of a graph to a rate of change. All right, let's take a look at example number 3. A hot tub contains 1,600 liters of water. Graph A represents the hot tub being filled at a constant rate. Graph B represents the hot tub being emptied at a constant rate. You can see the two graphs right here, graph A and B. Now we're going to, end up to identify the dependent and independent variables. And this should be pretty easy. The dependent variable is always our vertical. So it's the volume. Both graphs. The volume is dependent. Our independent variable is time. time. The amount of water in the tub depends on how long it's either been filling or draining. And that should make sense to you. That the volume of water in the tub is depends on how long it's been filling or how long it's been draining. Well, let's take a look at the graphs a little bit more in detail. Our first graph, we can see that the tub fills up 1,600 liters, and it takes about 80 minutes to fill it up completely, starting at zero. Then, if we have our tub at 1,600 liters, it takes about 40 minutes for it to drain. So it drains a little bit faster than it fills up. Letter B, determine the rate of change for each relation and describe what it represents. All right, so let's look at our first graph A, our rate of change. We start down here at zero. The graph goes up 800 over 40 minutes. So our slope, it goes up 800 liters every 40 minutes. So the amount of water in the tub increases at a rate of 800 liters for every 40 minutes. So our slope is equal to plus 800 liters every 40 minutes. Now slopes, we often divide them out to get a unit rate. So 800 divided by 40 will give us 20 liters per minute. And this is a positive. It's positive because the water is coming in and increasing. A positive rate of change on our graph goes up. Like this graph goes up. For graph B, we can see that we start high and then we go down. That means that we're going to have a negative rate of change. So let's look at our slope is equal to our rise over our run. So we choose two points. We start at 1600, we drop down 800, and we move over 20. So in this section of the graph, we go down 800 liters over 20 minutes. It's important that you use the scales of the graph, not the squares, the scales. So we're losing 800 liters of water in every 20 minutes. So for graph B, our slope is equal to negative 800 liters every 20 minutes. And this is going to be when we divide it out negative 40 liters per minute. So every minute we're losing 40 liters of water from the graph. All right, so you can relate the rate of change to a graph and describe what it means on the graph. Example number four, we're going to graph each equation. Okay. Then when we look at letter B, we're going to look at which ones are linear relations, how do we know, and which equations also represent functions, which ones pass the vertical line test. All right, graph number one. I'm going to do this graph in red. X is equal to minus two. So we have to find everywhere on this graph where X is equal to minus two. So I'm looking at my X axis here, and I look down here, right here is minus two. So x equals minus 2 at this point. x equals minus 2. 
x equals minus 2 all along this line. So I'm just going to draw this. There's our first graph. Whenever you see a uh, relation where it's x equals a number, you're always going to get a vertical line. All right, graph number two, y equals x plus 4. Let's build a table of values for this one, x and y. All right, so x, we are going to um, choose some values for x. doesn't really matter which values for x we choose. I'm going to choose negative 4, 0, and plus 4. When I put negative 4 in the graph, I do negative 4 plus 4 is 0 on the y. I put 0 in, I'm going to get 4. I put 4 in, I'm going to get 8. So at negative 4 and 0. That's the x-intercept. 0 and 4 up here, and 4 and 8 will be way up here. If we look at those three dots, those three dots are nicely in a line. There's graph number 2. Let's look at graph number 3. y is equal to 4. So we have to find every point on the graph where y is equal to 4. So for this one, we're going to look at our y axis. And we're going to go to where y is equal to 4. Right here, 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 here. Everywhere in a horizontal line. This is our graph y equals 4. Whenever you see a relation where it's y equals a number, you are going to get a horizontal line. All right. And now for our last one. x squared plus 4. So we're going to have an x here and y. And I'm going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for these values. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. So I'm going to get 8 here. So it's negative 2 squared plus 4. Negative 1 squared plus 4 is um, 5. 0 squared is 0, plus 4 is 4. 1 squared is 1, plus 4 is 5. 2 squared is 4, plus 4 is 8. So I'm going to get those points. So negative 2, I'm going to be at 8 right here. Negative 1, I'm going to be at 5. I'm going to be at 0 here, here, and here. And this makes this curve like this. All right, so which ones are linear? All we do is we look at them and we determine whether they're straight lines or not. So this one is linear. This green one is also linear. It's a straight line. The blue one is linear. And the pink one is not linear. Now we have to determine if they're functions or not. A function will pass the vertical line test. If we draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph, if we draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph, it'll only cross the graph one spot. And for the blue one, that is true. So this, or sorry, for the... I was supposed to do the red one first. The red one is not, because if we draw a vertical line, it goes through all the points of the graph. The red one is not a function. The green one, if we draw a vertical line anywhere, it'll only cross the graph exactly once. And that's true. So the green one is a function. The blue one, draw a vertical line through everywhere on the graph and across only once, so it is a function. The pink one, 
Let's take a look at it. If we draw a vertical line anywhere, it does. It only touches the line once. So the pink one also is a function. All right. Um, I hope you found this helpful. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below or contact me.